try to give an answer which is actually correct almost correct 90 percent because she is telling in in all the spheres women and men should be equal given equal opportunity so that is actually the definition of gender equality so uh, for socially politically or economically where men and women are treated equally in our, at home also outside also in college or you when you go to work where whenever we treated when we get treated equally that's when we get equal opportunities also. So when we get equal opportunity like men and women, that's when we call we have achieved that kind of progress in our society. But no, pro no country in the entire world has reached that state. Still there are a lot of discrimination against women. For example, Andhra Pradesh. Do you know, any one of you know uh, what is the literacy rate of Andhra Pradesh? No, it's wrong. She is telling it's 40 to 50 percent. What is the literacy rate of Andhra Pradesh? Government of India calculates literacy rate based when a person is able to sign or write his name. It is considered that person is illiterate. No need to go, for, go to school also. If a person is able to write his or name, that person is con considered to be illiterate. That's how we'll calculate. So based on this calculation, what, what would be the literacy rate of Andhra Pradesh. It is average 75 percent something. Do you know what is the literacy rate of women of Andhra Pradesh? It is just 59 percent, not even 60 percent. So still lot of women don't get to go to schools, don't get educated in Andhra Pradesh. It is just 59. It's very bad. Actually, it's one of the least in uh, countries. In India also, it is one of the least. So, but all of you have come to college, all of you have crossed schooling and everything. But most of you, after completing college also, you need to go for some job. You need to pursue your career. But most of the cases, what happens? Girls who uh, pass off to the college, most of them end up getting married. They don't actually go to job. So that the situation is going on. Not only in Andhra Pradesh, in many other states also. Percentage of uh, women workforce is very less actually. In all, the, in all the states in, in India. So my humble request would be to all of you that after your college also, you should pursue your career, go for a job. It can be anything. So that's how we like contribute to the society also. So all of you, please think about it. When you go out to the college, have some goal, have some career. So pursue your career. And most of the time, you will think that house uh, law support ledu, so mother is telling like this, or father is telling like this. 
but it's not like that when you are very consistently preparing or focused on one particular uh, career that you will definitely be able to achieve it. So for example, in my batch, we were 180 IAS officers, out of which only 30 were women. Rest of the people were only men. So even in IAS, out of 180, only 30 women cleared IAS exam. So rest of them are men only. So that number should increase. 90 should be like men, 90 should be like women, right? Half, half. So that is not happening even in IAS also. So that situation should be changed. Even if we take politics, so a lot of girls will tell I'm not interested in politics. But in politics also, not very many women go into politics also. We can like just a number. How many see women CM are there, women PM. We just had only one women PM till now. So all of you look very bright and energetic. So just don't uh, lose it. College Tarvata Vanni Marchpokudu, you should just follow it up and take it to your life also. So, and I find a lot of uh, like girls, I think you doesn't eat properly because most of you look anemic also. Why I am saying this? I was, when I was in college, I used to be very, very, very anemic. So, after that, only I came to uh, like know that after, after some years, all of you will become a mother. So when you give birth to a child, that child is actually a asset to the society. We should not be giving birth to a malnourished or undernourished child. Even this is one big issue which is going on in Andhra Pradesh, where a lot of uh, small like kids, death, deaths are happening, antenatal deaths. One, one year, within one year itself, child will die. Because the mother was very weak, mother is undernourished. So all of you also, or if you have elder sister, relatives, cousins, you should tell them that it's not only for the uh, person, lady, it's for the future generation also that you should take care of yourself. So there is a lot of uh, energy and strength among yourself. If your father or mother, somebody telling that you're not equal to your brother or your male counterpart, it is not true. It's, that, it's just that you were not given equal opportunity for so long. If given an equal opportunity, all of you can also reach same heights. Just believe in your uh, uh, inner strength and try. Just uh, uh, don't stop trying. So I don't want to talk uh, much. It's like it's, it's one-sided and going on preaching. I don't like to give advice also. If any one of you wants to ask something about civil service or something related to women empowerment or gender equality, it's open. You can ask few questions. Talk to me, right? Yes, ma'am. You're not visible. Just come out. I can see her. She's there. Okay, then. You're from which, uh, which degree? Third year, ma'am. Engineering third year. Engineering third year. Okay. So my optional was sociology. I chose sociology because I did masters in social work as a PG course. Then I, I knew, I analyzed my strength. Then I knew that I can write good answers. So usually if it is science, then we need to write only about the logics and we need to just constrain our answers only to uh, science. If it is arts, like something related to history or sociology, your, your perspective also you can write and uh, you have a uh, bigger arena to write actually. So that's why I, I chose sociology. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, what is your message to the young aspirants? How many people are interested in UPSC here? Okay, I can see few hands. What do you want to become IAS, IPS? IAS? Okay. You? Okay, so IAS they are saying some might be IPS also. So uh, under UPSC we have lot of uh, services. 
Uh, actually, I don't remember the numbers also because there are like huge. We have Indian Railway Service, Indian Information Service, then Personal Service, some like kind of services. But the uh, first service is IAS, then comes IPS. So for all young aspirants, only one thing, uh, it took some two years to clear the exam. Some people will take six years also. Some people will clear in first attempt. Some people will clear six, in sixth attempt, fifth attempt, fourth attempt. But when we prepare, no, so we should prepare with consistency and hard work. So everyone's capability and everyone's uh, uh, understanding will not be the same. I might clear in first attempt or somebody will clear in sixth attempt. Doesn't mean that that person is of less than me. So we should, all of you should just keep trying. Uh, one day you will definitely clear, just don't lose heart. Because I know my one of my, uh, my friends, she also cleared in same batch only. She got married and she had two children. After that, she prepared on her own. Like she did not go to any coaching also. She sat at home and she prepared herself and then she cleared. She also like came with us in same batch. So this, this kind of uh, inspiring stories are also there, inspiring persons are also there. So for all uh, aspirants, just don't lose like your heart, just don't give up, just keep trying. Uh, one day you will definitely reach your goals. Thank you ma'am. Uh, how many hours did you prepare for a day and where you had prepared? Will you advise me? So as I, earlier I said, it depends on person only. I did not study for 18 hours. It's not possible also because you are a human being. So maximum you can study for eight hours. But I started early and then I would wind up some time around 10 o'clock or something in the night. So um, it depends. One day, it is actually long journey. It's not like uh, uh, two days you study and then third day you go and write exam. It is almost one hour, one year preparation or two years also. For a few people, it will be three years, four years. So consistency uh, matters actually. Today you study and tomorrow you get bored or you see your friends going out or uh, you want to go out, go to some function. Then you will be like, I don't want to study today. So that should not happen. You should, every day you should study. Study, have that consistency. Six hours or seven hours or eight hours. Depend depends on your memory power and, uh, and your capacity only. Purely it depends on you. Like a lot of people will, will uh, tell that you should study for 10 hours, 15 hours, 18 hours. Nothing like that. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. I'm Anusha. Uh, very honored to see you, ma'am. I have a question that as everybody in their field they has a vision to achieve something, right ma'am? So when you getting into the civil servant, do you have any plans to achieve in your service? Okay, that's a very good question Anusha, thank you. So uh, when I wanted to become IAS, actually um, I initially when, when I was in 11th and 12th standard, I wanted to become a doctor actually. Uh, doctor, I just thought I can uh, help a lot of patients, I can do some good service. Then in 12th standard, I got very less mark. It, it was not even 75%. So definitely I can't go for a doctor. Then uh, actually my aunt told, if you become a doctor, you can only serve like few people only, but if you become a district collector or IAS, you can serve a lot of people. So that got into my mind. So my intention then also and even now also that I want to like help though, uh, like many people. Um, a lot of people come to us actually for uh, asking job or some kind of services. So I would want to go and reach out like uh, um, for example, in our uh, Kakinada district itself, there are mandals like Eleshwaram Pratipadu, which is very far and people cannot come to us actually. So I would want to go and reach out to them. In, in, uh, in turn, they are coming, I want to go and reach out to them. So that is my actually, uh, like then only I will feel happy that okay, I have done something in the service, that I have reached out to the unreachable people. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. I am Kirti, currently pursuing AI, ma'am, third year. So, as my domain is artificial intelligence, there is a technology called ChatGPT, which is based on AI, which yeah. will answer everything that what, what universe know. But it failed in uh, answering the questions of UPSC. Okay. <laughs> so, how is that exam is very tough? If a normal CSC student who is like me studying third year want to crack IAS or IPS exam, then how we can crack within? 
you can see, you you cracked the exam within two years what are the main domain or the main key domains which we have to concentrate to crack IAS exam okay so you should not search in chat GPT for <laughs> cracking IAS exam because chat GPT will just give you like for now answers but uh, UPSC uh, is vast okay we have a lot of subjects from history economics political international relations like I think almost 20 30 subjects we have so uh, exam scheme is first we have preliminary exam we have two papers then in mains almost we have nine papers that is uh, descriptive we need to uh, write elaborative answers preliminary is just uh, um, qc questions we just need to mark in the ori, ORI uh, sheets so actually wo what you need to do is if you want to prepare we have this NCRT books, almost uh, everyone would be knowing. It is uh, uh, like school books only. So the basic thing is you need to study school books. Whatever we studied from our childhood, starting from 6th, 6th to 12th NCRT books you read, and then you read the newspapers. Nowadays, most of the questions are from current affairs only, whatever is happening around us. So read in the newspaper if you want to like pursue IAS exam or any other exams also. Just read school NCRT books and uh, newspapers. That will help you. Say thank you. It's OK. It's okay. The next question. Yes. This is the last question. Sure. Good afternoon, ma'am. I am Ansha. Louder. Ma'am, uh, for every success stories, there are many circumstances and sacrifices they did. Uh, so, what are, uh, what are the circumstances and sacrifices you had faced? And uh, what are the steps you took to stand in your position? Okay. So, it's a very personal question. So, uh, when I was seventh standard, I lost both my parents in an accident. After that, my mother's younger sister grew us up. I have one younger sister and one younger brother also. So, my, my aunt, she runs one NGO. It's for women uh, development and empowerment. So, I have already seen and uh, like always from childhood, I have seen her NGO activities and got fascinated. So, my situation was... Um, like I have no parents and I and I need to do something in the society which I through which other women can also get motivated because lot of women come to our NGO uh, with lot of issues like domestic violence uh, then like child abuse lot of things so I thought that time itself that I should be in such a position that uh, uh, no such things happen to me that no person uh, will be like dare to come near me also so I wanted to be in that's at that position in my life. So that actually motivated me. That, me. I'm sorry to ask you and thank you for asking. Uh, it's okay. answer me. Thank you.